Hello my friends and welcome to the Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Solo Mode Dex Overview Part 14. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm done with the Mummels now, so I'm moving on to the next one. Which is <clears throat> going over the um I forget what's after Mummels. Oh it's Dark Dead Vengeance. And, I mean, this is pretty nice because zombies are a pretty good deck. And this kind of goes with the zombie strategy. Like, zombies are here, one of the better ones of the event. So, maybe you'll be able to get some ideas if you want to combine your zombies with uh, Vendreds. And what's really nice is that zombies have been made, like, more easily accessible than ever. Because the, um, <clears throat> the structure deck... Contains quite a bit of like good zombie support So yeah, so that's pretty nice So here's the first one. So this so this is my deck. It's called Rising adventure and then the deck description reads of Avenger origin performs a ritual summon by combining three methods Shipping a monster from your hand Shaving a monster from your field and banishing a zombie type monster from your graveyard. When Vendred, Revenants, and others are used to ritual summon from the field, they can give additional effects to ritual monsters they call forth. Use the appropriate monster for the situation and for a ritual summon. So I think not. Okay, so I think every ritual spell does count like as like tripping in the monsters so that's actually kind of nice you do get effects off of like <clears throat> monsters that like like um get their effects off of being tributed but yeah like this is the only like form of like special summon sort of thing like i have like <clears throat> when i say special summon i mean like um like not just summoning an effect or uh no monster but like um some kind of like special monster like ritual link exceed etc this is the only one out of those like where like you actually like trivia the monsters so like i thought that was kind of neat um <clears throat> i'm sure like a lot of you i know that but i still, still think it's interesting okay so <clears throat> anyway vendred stridges um, it's pretty good. Like, the Vendred monsters are pretty good because they all have, like, ways of, like, being able to, like, special summon themselves. Pretty much. And a few of them, like, have, like, generic, um, allow you to, like, this one just cause a Vendred. But I believe there's another one that, like, where, like, that can basically use any, um, zombie to, like, special summon itself. And then the Revendred Slayer only requires you to banish a zombie. It do doesn't require you to banish a Vendred. So that's why they're kind of useful as like generic zombie support. And also with the Vendred cards, like you don't need like this. These can be like any like zombies. So like you can like do like generic zombies too. Like, you don't need necessarily need to use Vendreds, because this doesn't actually call for Vendreds, the ritual spell. Um, so that's kind of cool. So, like, what, so, like, <clears throat> so with this one, hold on, I guess you're not really running the other one. This one's kind of cool, because you get to tribute your opponent's stuff. <laughs> I remember facing that one. And then Vendred Reunion. So this is how, like, how you can get get back your banished monsters. And then Knights is like how you can add others. It also allows you to discard cards. So like it kind of works well with the Fabled or the Dangers. But not the Dark Worlds because this does discard costs. And Dark Worlds can only activate their effect when being discarded by an effect which... Eh, I think that was back in the day when, like, they thought, like, they'd be too powerful if, like, they w could, like, activate their effects by being discarded as an eff as as a cost, too. But then they kind of, like, were like, eh, whatever, we'll just do it for the Fabled. And so I think they kind of, like, 
made the Fabled's a little bit more powerful than Dark Worlds. But the Dark Worlds are pretty powerful too. But now with the dangers, like, it's kind of useful since, like, all the dangers, like, will, like, discard via their effect. Which is nice for the Dark Worlds. But yeah, that's what I'm thinking anyway. Um... I think, of course, Mizuki and Gazuki, you you get in the in the structure deck, so that's pretty nice. These are really nice cards. Um, the loner deck people are just playing one Gazuki and three Mizuki. I think this is good, um, because like generally being able to special summon things out of your graveyard is better than having a special summon from your hand. Although, it is nice to be able to like special summon high level monsters out of the hand um and then the oh yeah one thing i was thinking this isn't really going in line with this deck but like it is still a vamp it's still a zombie deck the vampires i think the um <clears throat> I think what's that one that link that that one link for the um Sayuja that Sayuja Skaldred I think is really good with the vampires because like if you can get special summon effect you can special summon one of your high level monsters from your hand which is pretty nice for the vampires because a lot of the ones you play are high level and if you special summon the Scarlet Scourge from your hand you can then get another one out of the graveyard with the Scarlet Scourge's effect. So I thought that was just a little bit interesting. So, yeah. So there's a piece of advice if you wanted to play the vampires. Anyway, let's get back to this. Oh, yeah. I, I think the Mizuki is better because, like, you can, like, special summon the Revenger Slayer out of the hand. But I believe you can still, like, do it out of the graveyard using Mizuki if you, like, ritual summon it properly. <coughs> which is pretty good and it doesn't really matter like if you like ritual summoned it or like special summon it the only thing that really matters is that you won't get the sensor graveyard effects as it since it only like activates if it's been ritual summoned it only sh it makes sure that it's been ritual summoned in order to activate that effect but still being able to special summon off of Mizuki is pretty nice um, and then, of course, Una Zombie. This is another card you get in the structure deck. Another really good card, too. Also, you can special summon off of Solitaire. There's not... I don't think there's a ton of, like, um... Like, targets you have for Solitaire. I, th I think, like, a lot of the Shirinui's, actually. But this is probably the best target for Solitaire. Um, unless you're playing, like, a dedicated Shirinui deck. But in a generic zombie deck like this, like, if you were to play Solitaire, probably the best target. Because, like, this one has some really nice effects. First of all, you get to discard a card. So you could potentially fake, um, get two zombies into the graveyard with this one card. If, like, the card you discarded was, was also a zombie. So, yeah, it's pretty nice. Um, yeah, and then the... The whole, like, um, increasing, decreasing level doesn't always matter. What the important part is, is that you get a zombie in the graveyard. So, it really doesn't matter too much. I mean, like, sure, maybe you'll lose access to all of the arc light, but, like... But, <clears throat> sometimes you just want to put a zombie into the graveyard. So, don't think, like, you should just activate this when you can, like, make the right levels for a synchro. Sometimes just want to do it to get a zombie in the graveyard. And then Foolish Bear, really good because zombies like going to a graveyard. Mizuki and Gazuki both have graveyard effects. Although Gazuki does require a little bit more setup. Although, since it doesn't need to banish itself, you can activate it multiple times. Like, it's only once per turn each though, but like... This can activate more often than Mizuki, unless you have a way of, like, sending Mizuki back to the graveyard. 
What's also kind of nice about Mizuki, though, if you have a way of, like, filling a graveyard with more than one Mizuki, you can activate both of them on the same turn, which is pretty nice. It's, all you gotta have is, like, another zombie in the graveyard. You could even, like, use a Mizuki special summon the second copy of Mizuki, and then once that goes to the graveyard for maybe, like, a Link summon, you can use that Mizuki special summon something else. So technically, all you really need is, like, two Mizukis and maybe one of the zombie to, like, eventually special summon something else with the other Mizuki. Anyway, because it doesn't restrict itself from being summoned. Okay. Um, anything else I want to point out about the deck? Oh yeah, this is nice because it basically helps you set up you up for a ritual summon right away. Pretty nice. Paw of extravagance, extra draw, always, always good thing. Yeah, and I agree that like since they're running so many like three ofs, that's the reason why like they're running three ofs because. And I think like Paw of Extravagance isn't bad for like a zombie deck in general, because you could probably like just run a lot of three ofs, like because that, like do zombies really need to use the X deck? I mean maybe they do like. <clears throat> But yeah, you could probably pretty easily set up a zombie deck to be able to use Paw of Extravagance if you really want to. <clears throat> I mean, it's, it can be basically the most free of the parts if you set up your, if you're able to set up your X deck in the best way because Paw of Desires, like it banishes your cards. Like and it's kind of hard to like set up your main deck in a way. Where, like, Pod Zaz doesn't really punch. I mean, you can run a bunch of three ofs, but <clears throat> sometimes it does just suck. I, I still think, like, Extravagance is definitely the best, like, to try to, try to like, um, set up the extract for. But sometimes you just can't. Sometimes you just can't, though, so I understand. But if you can, I think it's definitely worth it. But, of course, Pod Prosperity is a nice card, too. The only problem with, like, the T... With OCG, I think it's, like... Is it on the ban list? But, I mean... With the TCG, it's just... The only problem is that it's expensive. Pot of Extravagance is way cheaper. So, there's something else. And also, Pot of Prosperity does only net you one card. I mean, it can net you a very specific card. But, still, only one card. If you only need a specific card, though, like, which a lot of decks probably would like. But, Pot of Extravagance is definitely the next best thing, if you can't afford Prosperity. I would say, just try to, like, um, set up your x in a specific way, if you can. Um, different Dimension Reincarnation, nice for getting back the Banish, and this does quite a bit of Banishing, so I can agree with that. The... Ritual also does a little bit of banishing. Vendred Knights to get you more Vendred cards. Yeah. And also, like, it's pretty nice for allowing your Vendred to attack again. Which is really nice if you got the Revendred Sly Slayer to pretty high. Oh, wait. Since Revendred Slayer... The, um, gaining attack is a once per turn. You can technically have it gain 600 attack in one turn. If you have enough, un enough Vendreds in your graveyard. Or zombies, rather. And then you can just use that, f the Banshee of Vendreds for the Vendred Knights. Which is pretty nice. And then it gains that 300 attack for a second attack. <clears throat> And then reunion for getting back your banish, and then being able to like set your graveyard up with even more zombies potentially, which is pretty nice. Um, and then like these are pretty good generic X deck monsters. I keep forgetting how good Vampire Sucker is for like um decks that like ha have like a lot of higher high level tribute zombie monsters. Because I keep forgetting that I get to tribute 
oh wait, it has to be a zombie. But that's why I'm like special summoning it as a zombie from my graveyard. Hmm. I did get zombie world though for someone, but I'm not sure if zombie world fits into vampires. I mean, maybe it does because like vampire kingdom may not be like that important of a field spell. Someone can let me know if they think if if they think if it, if they think it's worth it playing zombie world in in a vampire deck. And then Yukiona, just a really good card. It allows you to um, negate your opponent's activated uh, banish monsters effects, which is actually really nice if you're like facing against a banish deck. Um, it's nice to go into just for that. And also, <clears throat> it punishes your opponent from like activating stuff in the graveyard or like special summoning something from the graveyard. You get so that's pretty cool. Um, and then that effect is like something you can do twice. So if your opponent has a lot of like graveyard stuff, which a lot of decks I think do, it also punches that. So it punches both banish effects and um, graveyard effects as well, or graveyard summoning. But it definitely punches the banish effects a lot more. So, like, it's really devastating when you're facing uh, a Metaphys deck, for example. Since most of their deck is all about, like, act like activate effects on banished monsters. It absolutely crushes them. <laughs> That's funny. Anyway, I'm going to look at this deck now. Here's the opponent's deck. Uh, and then this one's called Undead Synthetics. Deck description, Vendra Chimera has the effect of nullifying the activation of a spell trap or monster effect that would destroy on the car in the field and destroy on that car instead. Prevent your opponent's attack with Pyramid Turtle and Goblin Zombie and prepare for a ritual summon with three Vendra origin, which also allows you to banish zombie type monsters in grave of ritual summon. So this one like has like a few of the same monsters I think this one might have also been included in the other Vendred deck. Oh yeah, something about the um, effect monster Vendreds is that if they're used for ritual summon, the, the only thing that sucks is they have to be used as ritual summon while they're on the field in order to like give the ritual summons like these various effects. Like this one gives it the ability to allow you to draw and discard just for like destroying, uh, just for battling an opponent's monster it doesn't even have to destroy it. This one gives the effect of being able to quick effect banishing a spell or trap. This one gives the effect of being able to quick effect banishing a special summon monster. But if you do have more than one Vendred on the field, you are able to give the Vendred multiple additional effects, which is kind of nice. <clears throat> so yeah, that's stuff that I did point out in the other one. So this one I think is like pretty much mostly the same, though it does have like a few different like generic zombies. They did get rid of the Mizuki and Gozuki and the Una zombie, and I think those are some of the better ones. So like I think this one might be slightly worse, but it's still not too bad. This one allows you to special summon a zombie from the deck like it has to be a sort of bow but that's but you can just like crash it into an, another attack position monster and since it's 2000 less defense there are a lot of targets you can get with it um pretty much the only target you can't well this one because it's fairy but also this one because it has 2100 which is a hundred more um and then this like grabs a little bit less but it has a little bit of a, an easy activation condition still grabs quite a few of your monsters though and then shoot 10 doji is is this deck's way of being able to um 
get back your banish zombies it also can like um be able to like function with its like other effect by being able to banish two of your zombies to make sure it can like activate that for another turn the second effect and then manju allows you to add a ritual spell or monster whatever you need and then chimera Um, this might, like, have the better effect, but it is a little bit restrictive on, like, what it can actually negate, but it's still pretty good, like, it can, like, stop things like Dark Hole or, or, like, Gecky, Hobbit's Feather, so stuff like that, and then, <clears throat> and then also, if it itself is used for a Ritual Summon, it it puts a, a attack loss on on your whole entire opponent's field of monsters, which is pretty cool. Um, double summon just to get you. This does allow you to put like multiple vendreds from your hand onto the field, so you can get multiple effects onto the ritual. Um, preparation of rites, kind of like pre preparation of rites, allowing you to get both the need stuff for the ritual summon right away ritual weapon to give this guy 1500 extra attack and defense vendra knights again i already went over these two also this one it only prevents revenge red slayers destruction by battle card effect and this doesn't count as revenge red slayer but that other ritual summon that I had did, so. Doesn't actually protect this guy, though. Um, Sakuratsu armor. <clears throat> to destroy attacking monsters. And then this is the one that allows you to tribute one of your opponent's monsters off. And then it gives you a token, which is pretty nice. Um, so it gets rid of an opponent's monster and gives you a token the controller token at the same time um and then the whole like n not being able to normal special monsters doesn't really matter if you're like activating it during your turn and even if it's oh wait it's while well, it's on the field okay but then you can just get rid of it and then like it opens you up to being able to like get the normal special summon back um Call the Haunted for getting back the monsters. It can also get back the rit properly ritual summon monster. And then also the links that were properly summoned. And then the playing service for getting rid of main, main monsters on monsters. Pentastag giving the monsters um, piercing. We Witches for giving the entire team an attack boost basically. Almost the entire team. Cross sheep. That's a really nice effect when a ritual monster is summoned to its zone. That draw two discard two isn't bad. Um Yukiona. That might actually be like I believe the best one actually. Out of the Although the fusion one isn't bad either. Anyway, Yukiona. Um Again, like, I already went over that. Okay, so I think I'm going to go over the first two here. And then the last one in the next episode. Eh. Should I just... Yeah, nah, I will do that. Um, okay, so this one says... Well, actually, I, I guess I could just go over all of them. Um, the deck description for this one reads, Revendred Executor has high attack, and if it was Ritual Summon is in the main, is in the monster zone, the opponent cannot target cards you control with card effects except this card. It can protect spell or trap cards and other monsters that are spawned the battle. So deploy a center around Revendred Executor and defeat powerful enemies. So this deck is called Fierce Avenger, and the big thing added here is Vendred Core is kind of introduced. 
Vendra Core. Oh yeah, see, Vendra Core is the one that like just requires you to banish any zombies. So that so this is pretty nice. Um, for like even just generic zombie decks, you might even be able to play this like in like a non Vendra deck just because like it's a pretty easy special summon, and then you can like use it for any of your like links that call for zombies. And this deck has a few vampires because, of course, this one is just generic. Um, it's just easier to get the to get the um um the using a monster with a level that's owned by an opponent when you're um playing with the vampire since it's all about stealing your opponent's monsters. Um, okay, and then. So I went over those, Mizuki. Okay, so the other one that they showcased was the Revendred Executor. Um, allowing you to add a Vendred when if it's destroyed by a battle or, or a card effect while, when it was ritual summoned first. So that's pretty nice. And then also it helps protect your cards from being targeted by card effects. Except this. So like it protects the other guys. And that's all of your. And that's all of your cards too. So not just your like um, monsters but also your back row as well. So even in your set cards. I mean, it's kind of like specific in what it protects against, but still kind of nice. Um, card destruction to get a lot of your zombies into the graveyard. It b basically helps fill the graveyard for Mizuki. Foolish Burial, you can send Mizuki or one of your Vendreds that you can like later special summon from the graveyard with the various effects. Terraforming to get your Vendra Knights because that's a pretty nice card. Um, and then Burial, this is like another way to get the banished monsters back into the grave to be then be able to like banish them again for like the Revendra Origin or like use the graveyard effects again to spell some themselves. <clears throat> Here's another um, ritual spell that wasn't featured in the other ones, allowing you to um, be able to like send one Vendred from your deck to a graveyard in order to like ritual summon something. Like this makes it pretty easy to ritual summon one of your ritual monsters, because all you really gotta do is just send one with equal level level from the deck to a graveyard, and then you can just like get it out. Um, and then Vedra Nightmare, changing levels so that you can make it a little bit easier to ritual summon. And then Vendra Charge, to be able to special summon a Vendra from the deck, except for the rituals, of course, but any of the main deck monsters are good. Vendra Revolution, um... Allows you to basically um, get back a ritual spell along with a monster, and huh, and then like you get to draw a card, but you have to. Oh, and then it also recycles your f oh five of your banned zombies. So once you have a bunch of banned zombies, like you can just like. This is another way of being able to, like, um, restock them. <clears throat> and also naming your card. So this is kind of like a part of advice for, but for, um, Banish monsters instead. And then Vendra Daybreak. <clears throat> basically can, like, Wow. Wow, so it destroys everything except the Ritual Sun monster. Hmm. So yeah, that should be pretty easy to activate. Pretty nice card. And then Beatrice. Pretty, 
um, to level six. So like basically, you're using two of your Revenge Slayer to bring out one of your exceeds. Although I'm not sure how worth it that is. Though they do have some pretty <laughs> good effects. Um, yeah. This allowing you to like steal your opponent's monsters, and the other one allowing you to um, forge bury your monster. And then underclock for like um, draining your opponent's monsters attack, so it helps you get over like higher attack monsters. Um, vampire sucker for basically being able to like special some monster out of the opponent's graveyard and then draw a card. Or you could just like wait until you can special summon a zombie out of your graveyard and then draw, draw a card. Probably a better way to use it. Pentastag, I already went over that kind of. Puzzlomino. Um. Hmm. Kind of like really specific removal, but it can be good in some cases. Geonado, switch one of your low attack monsters for a high attack monster. You could even switch your your zero attack monster that's in attack position for one of your monsters and maybe even get game because you're attacking into a zero attack. Maybe that will be what it takes to get game. Um, unicorn, just genetic, just really good removal. And then I went over the Yukiona. And then here's the pawn stack here. So it's called Malice Towards the Avenger. It, the deck description reads, due to the effect of Vendra Ballord that banishes one Vendra card from your graveyard, your opponent can activate the effect of any one type of card. Monster spell a trap during that turn. If you can access your opponent's tactics and declare the type of cards you don't want them to activate at that moment, you'll have the upper hand in the fight. So the big thing that the, my opponent's using in the Vendra Ballard, so that allows my opponent to be able to stop me from like activating a specific type of card, either monster spell or trap. Um. for the rest of the turn. But the only thing that's kind of sad about it is that it has to be activated during their turn. So, <clears throat> so it's kind of like specific. Um, but I guess if like they see me having back row, they could just call traps to make sure that I'm not able to stop them with my traps. But, like, that's assuming that I didn't already activate it before they brought out this monster and then activated the effect. It would be much better, though, if they could activate during my turn. <laughs> this one allows you to not only add a ritual monster from the deck to hand, but, like, also send a vendor. So that's not bad. It foolishes and adds a ritual monster. That's, ooh, and that's any ritual monster too. So you could potentially add more than just Vendreds, but they can only add Vendreds since that's all they're playing. But so, preparation of rights once again. Um, I already kind of explained these. Um, here's another kind of new card that they're playing, Zombie Master. Um, basically. Train one monster out of your hand for a zombie in a graveyard. And, I mean, like, you could, like, just, like, trade one monster out of your hand to special on the zombie that you pitched if you wanted to. But you do already need to have a target in your graveyard before you can do that. It's kind of like with that, like, lights one, lights one. That, like, kind of does the same thing, but for lights ones. And then Vedran Anima, um... Allows you to, um, this is another one that we haven't seen yet. Um, this is just, ba it basically trades out itself in the graveyard to spell some of one of your other Vendreds. If you don't really like the effect that this card will give the ritual. Since it also special summons it though, it, it does like help you like 
give that ritual whatever the special monsters effect that it gives to ritual whichever one you want best set for at the time um Durgaress, really nice card allows you to um probably its best effect is being able to draw two cards and then discard one card and skipping the like just one draw phase is probably fine like this this is kind of a better reckless greed like in a way um though the thing about reckless greed is you could activate more than one of them but if you can bring out more than one digress which is a little bit harder you could potentially just like skip one draw phase and be able to draw like quite a few actually no you can't because it's a hard once per turn so never mind but still like if like, in, in, in some ways, this can be better than Reckless Greed. Because, like, the discard generally doesn't really matter if you're just discarding something that you didn't need. Or that can just function as well in your graveyard anyway. And then Vampire Bram is another one of those Vampire Exceeds that also, like, genetically works for zombie decks. Allowing you to basically... It can basically resummon itself and... Um, steal a monster from the opponent's graveyard. We Witcher's Prince, I already went over that. Okay. So now I'll go over the last stack. This is going to be a bit longer, but I just wanted to get through this. Um, I think it's better just to get through it all in one sitting. So here's um, the second to last deck. It's Blade of Salvation. The deck description reads, this deck is centered around Vendred and incorporate cards like Diviner the Herald um, to support Ritual Summons and Synchro Summons. Not only on can the effect of Diviner the Herald send Herald of the Ark Light from the extra deck to the graveyard to prepare the cards needed for a Ritual Summon, but it can also use its tu tu Tuner traits to Synchro Summon Chaos Roller the Chaos Ma Magical Dragon to help send Vendrant cards to the graveyard. So basically, the cards you send is like kind of dependent on whether like you you're just doing it to send something um, from the deck or extra deck to the graveyard, or if you're doing it to actually be able to set up for a synchro, because then you might want to care about the level. Um, but if you if you only like are doing it to send something from the deck or extra deck to the graveyard few of the best ones to send probably the best one to send is going to be the Herald of the Arc Light just to help you be able to prepare a little bit more for a ritual summon but um like your main deck has like a few pretty good ones as well like glow up bloom is a good one to send also since it doesn't restrict you on summoning after you send something oh it has to be a fairy never mind then what fairies you have is really only that one. Oh, I guess you can send this one too. But I still think the best one to send is probably gonna be the Herald of the Arc Light, honestly. Yeah. Like because you only have two targets and this one I mean sure, like this does allow you to Hmm Special Summon itself. But then you have to like change whatever like you're choosing to face down defense position. <clears throat> so like you can't just like send this with Diviner and then hope that you have a free like Synchro Summon level 6 because this because if Diviner is the only one on the field you have to like put that face down and it no longer can really be used for any summon, funny Link or Synchro Summons because it's face down. <sighs> but also Uni Zombie can send it. Actually, Uni Zombie can't send to graveyard, but it does. Uni Zombie does have some good um, targets to send itself, like the Glow Up Ball Bloom. Pretty much any of the Vendred, since they all have graveyard effects. Maybe even the Rituals, if you like, ha have a way of special summoning them from the graveyard. Like this one can special sum ritual summon f the ritual monsters from the graveyard. This one can also. Um. Okay. 
And then glow up bloom, good, because when it's sent to the graveyard, you get to add a level 5 or higher zombie. So it's basically like you send to the graveyard off a of glow up bloom, and then you can add any, and then you can add one of your um, ritual monsters. And then, of course, solitaire, probably the best one to summon. Oh, yeah, this is also a one you can summon off of the solitaire. But. It's probably bad just to go for Unu Zombie just so that like because then you can just use the Unu Zombie could, to send the glow up bloom to the graveyard anyway. So that's I think still the best option. And then of course three Mizuki and Gozuki I think is like a good pretty good ratio. Because Mizuki definitely won the best zombies and then Gozuki is still a little powerful but not as powerful. Okay. Monster Reborn for like easy access to like special summoning stuff in the graveyard, either to be able to special summon maybe one of your Vendreds so that you can use them at rit as ritual material off the field so you can like give your Vendred rituals like extra effects. Or you can like maybe special summon like an Uni Zombie to get its effect again or maybe like a diviner as long as it's on a different turn since these are both hard ones for turns or maybe any of your properly summoned x deck monsters too um and then the x deck like this one's pretty good because it also mills something from the deck to the grave this like mills stuff off the top also can special summon itself by banishing a lion dog, which I'm not sure how often you're going to be able to do that. But you do have a few lion dogs, so you might be able to. Um, But, like, definitely mostly there for being able to, like, excavate the top five cards. Um, And then you just add one lighter dog and then send the remaining ones to the graveyard. Which is good. Still good since a lot of your cards also like have graveyard effects. Shirinui Sun Saga, really good for zombies because Um this could allow you to recycle your oh yeah, this allows you to recycle your other zombie synchros and destroy cards on your opponent's field at the same time. But it's only zombie synchros, so it won't be able to like shuffle back in your non-zombie synchros. Looks like I only have one zombie synchro, so I probably won't be able to get that effect. Um, but still, like, um, it can like basically like protect your zombies from being destroyed by battle card effect by like banishing a Shinui, so you can just banish your solitaire. If you had in your graveyard. Um, Band Aid Flu, just a really good card. It sucks that this is like really expensive. Like, this is a really expensive card in the physical TCG. It's like 200 bucks right now, but it's getting a reprint, so that should be good. So, hopefully, it goes down quite a bit. Um, but yeah, really good because it allows you to destroy something, it also allows you to negate an effect once per turn. And it allows you to go into a, to one of your level 9 or lower monsters from your graveyard using, by putting this back in the extra deck, allowing you to go into it again later on. Link Rebo, um, you use a Link 1 to special summon it, and then you can get back by trimming it off a of level 1. And you do have a few level 1s. Christian Hockey 5 bucks, use this and... You basically use uh, Tuna and, and whatever else, whatever other monster you want, go into it. Allows you to special summon level 3 or lower Tuna from your hand or deck. So, probably one of the best ones. Probably the one you want to summon. So it can not activate its effects this turn. Probably the one you want to summon in that case is probably the... Either the... Yeah, probably the Glow Up Bloom. Because... Like, the graveyard effect is still really good. And then you can just, like, go into a link 3 with with, with um, the glow up bloom and this. Or you can just wait and go into, like, um, 
maybe like shooting rides or dragon um during the opponent's turn whatever you want and then Avenger Savior also a really good card for being able to mill zombies to your graveyard while also like raising this guy's attack or maybe one of your other zombies Oh, it has to be this guy's Yeah, because it's only when this bows. So this could, like, m help you get over, like, high attack monsters while also at the same time milling you a zombie. And also, like, allows you to, um, get Vendra cards back from your graveyard to hand. But, um, you can only activate... Oh, you can use both effects on the same turn. So that's pretty nice. And a fun fact, since this counts as a Vendred, you could um basically just cycle like through like by like going into one Avenger's Savior and then going into another one, like later on, and then using that other Avenger's Savior to cy cycle back this the other savior that's in your graveyard back into the X deck. And then you c and then like you can still use the um, zombie mill on the same turn, so that's pretty nice. So you'll basically like never lose access to your Avengers saviors. So that's kind of a cool thing you can do. And then now I'll go through the last deck. So this one's called the Cost of Vengeance. Deck description reads: This deck combines Vendred and Vampire. Which can activate powerful effects by paying life points. You can special summon monsters destroying bow to your field with cards such as Vampire Scarlet Scourge. Use this monster to exceed summon damper vampire shirt and or aim to ritual summon Vandrin monsters. Maybe this is where I found that like vampires could like be like combined with Vendreds. It makes sense though, because like <clears throat> because a lot of the Vendreds like can like use like generic zombies as like fuel for the ritual summons and like the vampire core which is not here but if it was the core could use like um just any zombie like as fuel for its special summon anyway vampire is really good for being able to um like add more of themselves like like this one's pretty good because it adds a vampire from the it also like messes quite a bit with the opponent which is pretty nice this one is basically like uh that creature swap where you're basically trading one one of your monsters off for for one of your but you get to, unlike with the creature swap, you get to choose which monster from your opponent that you're stealing. So if they have a really devastating monster, you could just take that and then, like, trade off one of your vampires that you don't care a lot about. Oh, yeah, and then the retainer adds you one of the vampires for a trap. So that's pretty nice that, like, you have, like, searches for both your spell and traps and your vampire monsters. And then, <clears throat> I'm gonna... Scarlet Scourge probably one of the vet best vampires since like when it's spe normal or special summon you get to just like special summon one of your vampires. You could use it to special summon your retainer, your familiar, so that you don't have to like banish them when they leave the field. Like if if you like s s because they don't because they're not being special summon off their own effect. Um, Fraulein allows you to. Um, special summon herself when she's, um, when a monster declares an attack, which is a pretty nice effect. And also it can basically help make sure that your, like, that your zombies are kept alive. You just need to make sure you're managing your life points pretty well, or else you might not be able to, like, activate this effect. You might just lose because, like, of your own accords. So... Yeah, Vampire Lord can be special summon itself, and also it allows you to send one, one of a type of card from the deck to the graveyard, basically triggering the Vampire Kingdom, allowing you to like destroy a card in their field by sending a Dark Vampire from your hand to deck to the graveyard. So that's pretty nice. 
pre-preparation of rights. Again, I already went over that. Vampire Desire. It either allows you to trade off one of your monsters for a vampire monster in your graveyard. And if the vampire monster in the graveyard that you chose was Scarlet Scourge, you can then activate its effect to spell summon out another vampire monster from your graveyard, which is pretty nice. So it could be essentially be a two, like a two for one. And then also, if you don't want to use that effect, it has another nice effect, allowing you to like target a vampire to like send another vamp, to send another monster, um, with a different level to your, from your deck to your grave, and then being able be able to um, change a level to that set monster's level. So if you like basically use it, you could like turn a level, this level two into a level six, maybe, and then maybe you already have a level six, and then you can go into one of your level six monsters, or you could just use it, um, just to send something from the deck to the grave that like has like good graveyard synergy. Oh, this also just like can spell summon itself by banishing your vampire lord. Hmm. And then this can get more zombies from your graveyard as well by discarding zombies. So it helps fill your great fill your graveyard with zombies while getting you back zombies. Um Vampire's Domain gives you extra normal summons, which is nice because then you can like just normal summon one of your lower level monsters and then use that as a tribute right away to go into one of your high level monsters. <clears throat> Which could essentially, essentially set you up pretty well. Um, Vampire Takeover. As long as you don't have a field spell. Um, this like helps you get the Vampire Kingdom and a zombie out from your graveyard to your field. And then, okay. So yeah, they have quite a few like special summon kind of abilities. This one also special summons something from your deck. Hmm. Interesting. It doesn't seem like people play this card. That seems like it could be pretty good, though. That Vampire Awakening. Anyway, here's a level 6 monsters. You're just, like, going into this a proper way. Um, so you're not gonna get the extra effect. Oh, wait, no, but, but that's actually not good anyway. So you are gonna be able to, like, be able to, like, activate it right away. And it's a pretty nice effect, like... It either like helps set you up or disrupt your opponent a little bit. Pilgrim Reaper is a zombie. It can essentially go up to high attack, like if there's a lot of dark monsters. And like since you since the other deck is gonna be filled with like um dark monsters as well, since like we're both playing like Vendred type decks. Like this should be able to like get up to high attacks pretty easily. And also it it allows you to basically like up its attack even more like while also filling your graveyard at the same time by milling you. And it also mills your opponent so it kind of sets up them as well. Jinzo Layered. Um, it, this is another one that lets you steal your opponent's monsters. So it kind of goes with the whole vampire theme. Um... Link Kribo, Salaman uh, Mangrave Album Lodge is actually pretty nice because like it allows you to normal summon your vampire familiar and then like um put in the graveyard right away by going into the Alm Lodge and then the familiar can activate its effect as long as you have a vampire monster in your hand or field, allowing you to like get a vampire monster into your hand. So that's pretty nice. Subris <clears throat> like it's really good because it just discards stuff to your graveyard while like disrupting your opponent and you like putting stuff in your graveyard and I pretty much went over those okay and then I think that was the last one. Oh, so my opponent's using the vampire Vendred so that could be a pretty interesting combination but I don't know if I want to go that way I think I'm just going to start with the uh, like regular vampire maybe I could like work my way into hybrids later on right now I'm just trying to get the good generic zombie stuff for my deck okay so I think I'm gonna um 
probably stop there just to make sure I can get this like as a 60 minute video so I won't do a, um since this was a longer video I d I'm not gonna do a um a pack opening today so <clears throat> thank thank you all for um whoever stayed for those deck overviews um and a big thanks to everyone who stayed for the intro and the outro as well like that's probably not much harder because like most of this video was pretty much just a one thing but um also thank you to ever like stayed for like any of the deck video o overviews e even if it wasn't all of them okay so now I'll go through the outro into the outro please like share and subscribe and consider ringing that notification bell for regular content you can either ring the notification bell to be notified of all my videos are personalized by simply clicking the notification bell and selecting all are personalized. All is being notified about all my videos whether you watch them or not and personalized is being notified of the videos that you watch the most. Also if you would like to leave a comment that would be greatly appreciated. Um, you can leave a comment about anything either pertaining to the video pertaining to the verse I leave in the description or just something random if you'd like just please keep it appropriate you can even leave an emote if you would like but just be aware that it may lock you out if you um, paste too many of the same emote in a day just in case like if you decide one day you just paste um, emotes on a whole bunch of my videos just keep that in mind um, usually you can fix that by either going with a different emote or by posting multiples of that emote um, instead of just the one um, um, th and thank you everyone who do watch um, my my videos and a big thanks to those who do um, watch all of my videos but still thank you to everyone who only watches um, a couple once in a while or just watches um, one one of the games I understand how it is no matter how you do it it just appreciated um, n no matter what, no matter how you decide to go about, um, viewing my videos.